Hello. <clears throat> Kathy Arbor here. Welcome to my studio. Nice hot day here. Hope everybody's doing good. I'm feeling a little lazy today, actually. It's rainy today, but very hot and humid. And I was looking through my very large book collection and found these old paint books that I had from, gosh, it's got to be at least 15 years ago. And I thought, I'm going to use those in my folder. Why not? You don't see them anymore in the, you used to be able to get them in Michael's or any craft store would have them, but they're very hard to find now. Um, I don't even know if you can get them on Amazon. But they're great because they give you your pattern and everything. Hey, guys. So why not use them in our art? They don't have to be put on a wood whatever. <laughs> That's what I used to paint on was, you know, you'd get a wood plaque or a bench or um, all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to use this in my folder. And I'm using the uh, Manila file folders. So they're good and sturdy. So it should take the paint. Well, I know it will take the paint because I've done it before. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, some of them, I don't know if you have some, but there are um, books for oils. This is this one is for I believe it's well this one when one would have been an oil but I always use them for the acrylics so you can uh, uh, I believe there is a formula that you can get it's probably online somewhere for what acrylic craft paint you can use instead of the oil color. But you can figure that out. It's not that difficult. Um, and that's a good way of, of learning how to use your different colors. You'll never learn unless you try doing it yourself. So practice using your um, paints to get the colors that they're showing in the books. And then you'll you'll be free to do whatever you want. Hey, Joan, Nana, hi, Lena. So I thought I'd try this magnolia or not magnolia, morning glory, and put it on my the back of my June folder. I never did finish that. I made one oil painting and it is hanging in <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> Is it good or bad? Or because you like to sit there and <laughs> and because you have to sit there for such a long time to enjoy the beauty of it. <laughs> hey, Kathy, Cindy, or Cindy? Why did I call you Cindy Candy? I don't know why. I just instantly have Cindy on my mind. <laughs> Um, that says how much. <laughs> oh, dear. Joan, hi. Christy, good to see you all. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so I thought, well, this is one of the, uh, I do love her, her work, Sherry Nielsen. She has such beautiful, she has a website of her own. I think you could still get her stuff. Um, you have to get it directly from her, though. And I think you have to call 
your order in. I don't think she has um, online orders. You have to call, like she has a web page where you can see what she has, but you have to call it in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I get it, Eileen. You're not an early. You're not an oil girl. <laughs> Hi, Melinda. <laughs> yeah, so I thought I would try and do this. Now, she does give you step-by-step -step instructions. Um, she, because she uses oils, you can see that it's very transparent. You can see through the wood to the wood. But you can get the same effect with glazes too so when you see an oil book don't and you like the the work in it you can still get it now with this i could actually just glue this whole thing onto here if i wanted to instead of having to draw it all out again and put you guys to sleep so I might just do that because it's going to be covered anyways. And I could just do it this way so that the yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Make things easy. Oh, okay. Yeah, they do have um, water so water soluble oils. I've never worked with them. I've never worked with oils. Period. Just never got into it. I I guess I was too busy with acrylics and other stuff. I and oils are very expensive. Um, I think they they are a lot quicker drying. Um, Lena, have you worked with them? Oils. Hey, Teresa. Jilly. Judy. So I think, I can't remember. Somebody told me it was like um, 24 hours and then you could do another coat or something. But don't quote me on it. Most of my life I painted. Oh, have you, Judy? Awesome. Yes, the brand is called Cobra, and they do have a fast drying medium. It sort of takes half of the normal drying time. Okay, so the. <laughs> they wouldn't be satisfactory for Eileen because it's not. <laughs> In an hour, right? I know Eileen wants instant. <laughs> now paint in everything but oils, except for oil sticks. Oh, yeah, they're gorgeous. I love those, too. I've got a few of those. Each layer took almost a week to dry. Oh, wow. The color that takes the longest to dry is white. So if you leave a glob of white, well, that can take more than a... Oh, man. Maybe that's why I didn't... I do have some oils here, but I've never broke them out. <laughs> and I think I love the idea of their consistency, of the spreadability of them and, and the blending of them. But... Yeah, the drying time. I think that's why I never really got into it. I agree with you, Candy. I didn't mind the drying. It was the solvents I didn't care. Yeah, the solvents too. Yeah, you do have to have proper circulation of air. That's true. And there's so much out there nowadays. 
you know, there's making um, so many different types of paint now that, you know, why limit yourself to oils when there's like, well, like um, the acrylic open by Golden. It's got a really slow drying time. Um, now, whether you can do the same thing with them as you do with um, oils, I don't know, because I've never worked with them. But I know a lot of people do really like that open because you can work with it similar, they say. Whether that's true, I don't know. Has anyone op uh, worked with the open acrylics by Golden? Do they work similar to the... Um, you know... You know, you know, now did a hazelnut suit to use your own. <laughs> This will have a little bit of texture because it's the tracing paper, so it wrinkles a little bit, but... Mixed media, it adds character. <laughs> and it's instant. <laughs> now, I'll just remove that once it's all dry. I guess I better. Um, golden open acrylics can be like oils. Yeah? Have you used them? I have used them. Love them. Oh, you do. Awesome. Yes, that's true, Cindy. Or Candy. See? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know why. Why am I calling you Cindy? Interesting. Just want to get that down. So it's on the edge of my paper, and I don't want it peeling up. Just want it to dry a little bit before I. Add another coat. Uh, let's see what else. To me, it's more about transparency. Well, well, nothing like the alizarin crimson in oil. So beautiful, vibrant, and in oils, the pigment dries up with a glowing, vibrant, clean color. Ah, okay. Golden is very good with their pigment. Yes, they are. I agree with that. They're assorted with the best make of oil paint, which is handmade called Willingberg. You must show us. Yes, Lena, that would be awesome. Well, it's so hard, though, to see the uh, luminosity online. You almost have to do it yourself. <laughs> yeah, that could be, Eileen. <laughs> Poor Paula. She'll never live that one down. <laughs> you need a long nap. <laughs> <laughs> no.
no, probably wouldn't be stream friendly. <laughs> I'm gonna dry this so it doesn't take so long. Hi, Mary. So this was my June folder. I'm, I'm falling behind here, people. <laughs> That's not good. So what has everyone else been doing? Hey, Dorothy. Lisa, hi. Oh, yes, you fall. You didn't break anything, did you, Dorothy? I hope not. Yeah. Oh, candy. I'm a, oh, I suffer with sinus problems and oh man. I feel for you. No, it didn't break any, any bones. Just real clean. Oh. That's, well, bad, but it's good. Why well, didn't break anything? Thank goodness. watched any of my other uh, lessons on acrylic painting it's basically you want to put down a base coat of your medium color is what I normally do and then you start either lightening areas or darkening areas so and it doesn't matter if you make a mistake because the uh, 
that's the nice thing about the acrylics is you can just do it over again, paint over it, try again. Um, with this folder, I like the manila color, but I want to probably put some ink on it just to age it a bit. That or um, don't want to put spray because the spray will move. So I want something permanent. Let's see. I could do a burnt um, umber light. This is the golden fluid acrylics. And these you only need a very small amount because they're very highly pigmented. I guess I should take some of this off. Get a bit of a clean area so you can see what I'm doing. So has anyone else done a lot of, um, I guess it was called decor decorative painting on, you know, wood products like uh, tabletops and chairs, that type of thing. I'm just going to put a little bit on here. And if you want a, a very light glaze look, you can also put glazing fluid with this or water. Um, I think I'll show you with water because oh, I know a lot of people don't have the glazing fluid. Find a brush here. This is a bright brush. A bright is short bristles. If you're wondering what the difference is. Um, Golden are doing a demo on their acrylics on their Facebook page. Oh, awesome, Dot. Thanks for letting me know. No, but I... I think that Barb Owen showed on her last stream mauling from Norway and talked about her kitchen cat. Oh, yes, I did see that. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many different types of decorative painting. There's folk art, you know, but really it's the basis of any kind of acrylic painting. So if you can do any kind of decorative painting, then you can do an, uh, an acrylic painting for your wall. Just that's, it's a great way to start to learn how to use your brush marks, shading techniques, that type of thing. So even if you don't like the, um, you know, the decorative wood, stuff that you're doing do it on a piece of paper it's great practice if you can find any of these books they're great as they tell you everything every stroke to do the colors you need it's great so i got water in my brush So I want to just basically smear around the edges. Now this is paper here, so it's not going to move a whole lot on the paper. But I'm fine with that. Then I'm going to take a baby wipe and I'm just going to smudge. 
years ago I did Calibriano. Oh, cool, Dot. You do the neatest things, Dot. Interesting. Get grungy on the paper. Look at this tracing paper. That you can't move it as well. That's interesting. Look at that. So you can't let this dry too too um, fast before you wipe it down. And I like the wrinkles. I'm going to cut that area anyway, so, and I'll go right over the, that doesn't matter because the acrylic paint will not show through on my next coat. So I'm not worried about that. Take the dirty part of the, and go over the wrinkles, then you get the wrinkles showing up. That's cool. It just gives it a little bit of aged look. Dipping it right in the, I like the corners to be a little darker. Yeah, doesn't she have gorgeous backgrounds? Kathy, was the tracing paper, was that tracing paper or something else? No, nope, that was, this was tracing paper. Um, just cheap, cheap Canson tracing paper. So it does wrinkle a bit when you put it down. So if you don't want something um, wrinkled on it, then it's best to do the, um, drawing off of it with a carbon paper but I like the old look anyway so that doesn't bother me uh, let's see thanks I have been adding more acrylics in mine last days y'all will be surprised how much it has progressed you must be just going to town Debbie Wow, that's great. See the stencil release? Oh, new stencil release, um, Joan. Awesome. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, so. Now we're going to start. So if anyone just came in, this is the Butterflies 
uh, in my garden book by um, Sherry C. Nielsen. And she's she does acrylics, but her primarily she does oils. But I buy her books anyways, even though I don't do oils. I just convert it to acrylic. It's kind of the same process that she's doing in oils. You can do the same thing in acrylics. And you get all your um, patterns and what colors she's using. So that's the good thing I like about it. So uh, let's see, I'll show you the, that's the background that she used in this one. But I'm just doing mine on my folder. So my background's going to be this. So let's see, where shall we start? Okay, so Windsor Violet, black, raw umber, sap green, lemon, white, Prussian blue, Naples yellow, French ultramarine, and gray. That's it. See flowers, heavenly blues. Beginning by separating each flower, we'll mm -hmm. lay in values as shown dark, medium. Okay, I'm going to just look at her flowers. Now, she, because she works with oils. If you want to do it the same way as she's doing it, you would have to work with a lot of um, glazing medium. So depending on how you want to approach it, um, so everybody does it differently. So I think I'm just looking at the flowers here. So she does a dark center in here with a bit of um, lemon and then she does the white too. Now the white would be probably second. The blue will have to go in first for around the edges if you want that um, white to be gradient. So let's see what I got here. I have, I have cool white. I've just got some um, Americana and I'll be using that. Show you. You don't have to use your um, your artist grade colors. You can just try your craft paint. So she has colors. Um, Windsor Violet, Sap Green, Prussian Blue, Ultramarine. Okay, so it's cobalt. Yeah. Prussian blue, where are you? Primary blue, maybe a little Prussian blue. I don't know if I got any color in that. I might have to use Prussian blue in the other. I don't think I have any. So let me get some out. Green blue.
expression either. So we'll have to wing it. Here's Ultramarine. Um, this is that really, uh, I think I'm going to try this one. Smalt Hue, it's called. It's kind of a purpley blue. Let's see. And I will get a brush big enough. Mm, yeah, I guess that will do. I could white it out a bit. So we'll use a little bit of the craft paint. If I have any, there we go. to be very transparent that one. Let's see what it looks like. How dark it is. It's not bad. So I'm just going to go over everything right now. This is kind of a mid-tone. So if you got art any um, file folders, try painting on them. They're really, it's an awesome way to practice your painting before you do a canvas. Because um, it's sturdy enough, enough to um, withstand a lot of layers. The only thing it's not that great is watercolor. So we'll try this one first. One thing about acrylics too is you do have to wait for it to dry. You can't try to put another layer on top because it will... Oh, the book is by Sherry E. Nielsen. Or Sherry C. Nielsen, sorry. And she does have a website of her own that she could probably order her books. Thanks, Bacola. And hi, by the way. <laughs> You snuck in. So I'm going to bring that down into the center just a smidgen. And then a little bit of that umber color. And I'm going to put that in the center here. With a bit of And we need some yellow. The book is so expensive. Well, uh, to do without. Oh, really, Dot? For you to get in the UK? Oh, did you post? Have you looked on her site? Look on her site. It may be a lot cheaper for you. Thirty dollars, thirty pounds. Wow.
Okay, so while we're at it, we may as well do this one too. Just uh, put a base coat on. Let's dry that up a bit. just now um, it's got a little bit of purple hue to it in some of the uh, creases so I'm gonna get a smaller brush here is that kind of good enough no let's see and I'm just going to add a little bit of red so I can make a purple. So a little bit of this ultramarine blue with a touch of purple. And like every second one has the purple margins in it. Do you guys want me to go in further or stay where I am? And then you can add a little bit of white to this purple. So you get a mauvey color. And just the tip of that's a folded over um, petal edge. So wherever there's those, you can put that in. So there's a little bit here. And then from the edges of the petals, just brush, flick 
some of the white color or mauveish color. It's kind of almost dry brushing. I don't have a lot on my my brush. It's just more or less on the tip of the brush. And don't worry if you kind of goof on it. You can always go back. You can always add, take away, add, darken as much as you want. So that's what I do like about acrylics. And then there's a kind of a darker. Let's see how dark this is. Oh, it needs to be darker. Let's see if that's good enough. And there's these little ribs and your petal kind of dips towards those ribs so there's going to be a little bit of a shadow casted by that so you're going to have to decide which um, direction your lights coming from more of this strange color. Let's dry that again. So I got this, um, it's a very odd shade of purple. It's more of a glaze than anything else. So let's see what happens when I put it back over. I think I need some glazing fluid. Just a smidge. Not 
that's better. So I just have to make sure you can tell where the underside and the this is the side view of this morning glory and you got to make sure you can tell that it's just not a blob. So I got to put some more highlighting in it. So in here, Sorry, I'm getting quiet. <laughs> it's hard to talk and paint at the same time. It's a white. A little bit of this blue with the purple. Kind of gray it down so
Okay, then a little bit of this yellow. in here and a little bit of the brown right up on me Darker. And That needs to be so I'm just going in the direction that the petals would be going in the center here. Might have to give it a couple coats. And then a detail brush. So some white with a bit of yellow. And then the secondary lines here were
brush is not the best. It's got some furry bits coming off of it. Let's see if I can find a better one. And a little bit of blue again, or purple. Depends how finicky you want to get. It's a good place to start, though, like I said, with your... Um, with practicing.
some white. <laughs> Thanks, Teresa. Thanks, Eileen. Yeah, it's just practicing, you know. Doesn't matter what you're going to try and do. There's always different ways of going about it. So it's a great way to just practice your um, stroking different um, colors of glazes. What does it do? You know, this is just your practice piece. And then you learn from it for when you want to do a really nice one on a, you know, frame or canvas or something. You practice your mixing for colors. This one needs some white in it. Where's that brush? Some of that white air veining in it. Mm, let's see where can I put it. Go put one in here. That. And then it's really dark. Some red with that. Just a very small line here.
really looks beautiful with the white name. Thanks, Lena. Yeah, you just have to play. A lot of times I'll, if I'm doing a painting, I um, I might do the same painting over and over. <laughs> Some of them like three times before I'm satisfied with what it looks like. Or maybe I'm having trouble with certain areas doing things and I'll practice. practice of a leaf. Just want to put in a base coat. That's the stem of the leaf and the flower. So I can still see the lines from the drawing in here. It's just a little darker in the center. And that one's still wet. I'm 
just get some cream. Light green. Let's brown it up a little bit. Deborah, it's coming. It's I haven't done this in a while. Flowers, that is. Other than the daisy I did the last time, but You're always harder on yourself when you're doing stuff in front of people. Highlight, I guess, in here. Okay, let's see what else.
see. That one's the crappy brush. Where did I put that other one? Hmm. That's the bad one. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. Nope, that's not it. All right, I just lost the brush. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Oh, there it is. Then I'm just going to go in with a little bit of kind of um, olive green, I guess you could say, and put some shadows in these stems. On the bottom here. You don't have to get all, if it's just a practice piece where you, you're just practicing one particular thing that you're painting, you don't have to get all doing every single detail, but I love detail, so that's why I <laughs> gravitate to this. Okay, that must be the butterfly there. And okay, let's do this leaf. Uh, Kathy, that leaf looks so realistic. You could cut. <laughs> Thanks, Teresa. Let's see. So looks like this is part of a overturn of the leaf. And I'm 
just mark where the veining is. <clears throat> Needs a little bit of blue in there. A little bit of blue more. Let's see the underneath here. A little more. Let's see if that's dark enough. Nope. More blue. Let's see.
Where was it? I should get rid of this brush. I'm picking it up. <laughs> Are you using a flat brush for the leaves? Yes. It's a... Can, just a very... Actually, this one is a filbert. But I'm also using this one, which is a flat. Filbert works just depends on how much of a straight line you want. Um, I use a lot of flat brushes or filberts. It also depends on the flower petal too. Like the daisy one, we used a round. I like using the flats because you can kind of all in one put your veining in <laughs> by um, painting in between the veins of the leaf. And then you just go back with your um, detail brush and uh, put a little bit of um, shadow or highlight in a glazing medium to wherever you want to brighten things up. You gonna try it? Awesome. Jesse, do you use any dagger brushes? Yes, I do. Um don't know if I got any out here or not. Depends on what I'm painting. Um but yeah, I do use Daggers. I like swords also is another nice one. You kind of have to play with your brushes to get used to using them for certain strokes. Starting to dry up. Get another color. Where is that? Some more of that out. Just as a base coat. That must be the butterfly there. So I'll leave that out a bit. Uh. 
Ah, let's see. You got a wonderful set of odd brushes. They look so nice. You know, <laughs> Eileen, use them. My very, my very best watercolor brushes are handmade. I watch them. Oh, awesome dot. That would have been so cool. You got some really neat stuff, Dot. You've done a lot of really cool stuff. Let's look at daggers and swords. <laughs> yeah, they're neat looking, aren't they? They must be fun, Dot. I'll say. That would have been so cool. Um... I have one dagger. Where is it? Of a. Yeah, that's my Princeton Nep Neptune dagger for my. They make really neat flowers, watercolor flowers. Um, I did have a really cool one for. I don't see it in here. It must be it was super long. It was a acrylic brush. I must have it in my other container. Did you help? Hi, <laughs> Lane. Jeez. It would be nice to have fancy brushes like that, but very expensive. A little too expensive for my wallet. <laughs> see. Blue, blue, blue. There it is. White. And here, white. Blue. 
more. Pointy brush. <laughs> okay, I gotta read this. The rest of this item. Um. <laughs> brush guy order. Yeah, I like the brush guys. <laughs> they did have good deals. You have to make it worth your while. Especially if you're in Canada. You gotta make it worth your while. That vintage background is just perfect. Yeah, I like it. Uh, goes good with the blue, purple. Could put stamping on it. Mix a little bit of yellow with this here. Stay safe, everyone. I worry about some of you. Yeah, we're we're all doing our part. Okay. Well, there's a little bit of, this is a side one again, so you have to remember to put the light against the dark, so you always have to watch your contrast, because if you don't have enough contrast, then you can't tell it's overlapping each other. And then I got to go back to this blue again, I think. Let's 
sweep it in. A little bit of glazing medium. Ever so lightly. And down there, I think, just a little bit of a lighter. darker area right Some brown. to darken it a bit. Right in here. Wrong color. All right, uh, let's see, no. I 
gonna have a little butterfly there. But let's put some more of this uh, green down. So I have this green. Let's just do this for now. So I can map in where everything is. Flower buds. Too thick there. Let's see, now well, we may as well. Paint in this um, leaf here. I'm just going to use this forest green, I think it is, to base coat it. And then we'll add the highlights and shadows. I guess I can finish putting in the around the little buds here. There's a bunch of whatever they're called. <laughs> hey, Janet. more of that color. And let's see. Basically, base coat these buds. These are simple because it's just ba just a um, mid-tone, a highlight, and then a shadow. And I have one more those to do. Let's oh, base coat this.
The wrinkles are kind of a problem, but I'll work around it. You won't be able to get a real smooth look, but I like it. It's good practice. Yeah, they're neat. The, it always amazes me, the morning glories, when you look at them. <laughs> How they're so neatly twined. It's, it's really cool. There's a little bit of green on them. So I'm just putting a little bit on there. And then we'll go in with the blue again. Let's see. You're doing zentangles, Janet. Yeah, time flies when you're doing those. And let's see. I wasn't, I was out mingling with the German Fest. Crazy. <laughs> you were mingling? Janet. There's lots of people down. 
the area. Lots of people up here now. Beaches are open, which is silly, but what are you going to do? I just stay home. some white on the top parts here. Any more? Not quite the right color. I have to get that back. More of that purpley color in there. bit of blue. And then the white. Then this color is blue. And here. So remember, you gotta have contrast first, and then you can put the highlight in. Nice thing is you don't have to go. Yeah, that's true. Thanks, Joan. I'll stay home, Lena. I have to make myself go out and get stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. Don't like to... I gotten so used to staying in and ordering online. <laughs> you have to force yourself to, well, you got to adapt to getting out there. I had a giggle with another. <laughs> I 
All right, so now I need to do a little bit of highlight along the very edge here. It doesn't have to be along the whole thing, just parts of it. And then here is where that line gets a little bit, a little bit of yellow in it. So you want enough on your brush to chisel the brush a bit. Okay, let's finish this leaf. A little bit of yellow and green, some brown. Maybe a little blue. Let's see, it'll be darker, a little more. A little darker. Time is it? Oh, yes. Almost time to feed the puppers. They're upstairs letting me know that. All right, 
right, this is just finishing in time. So, Uh, small brush. Get a real detailed with a very fine brush. You just add a little bit of highlights to wherever you're taller areas are. So I'm just adding a little bit of yellow and white, make it a little bit of a lighter hue. So we can just, I could play doing this type of stuff forever. <laughs> I just like doing this. Oh, bye, Barbara. See you soon. Have a good afternoon. there and then there's going to be a butterfly on there let me just put a little bit more highlight here it's not the best <laughs> to work on as far as detail because of the bumps on the paper but you do your best You can see where you need to add a little bit more once you're 
you got most of it done then it does change the way it looks once you're all done you're able to see where you have to lighten things or darken certain areas or let's see then we can you can either paint a butterfly or let's see what we got here I have an extra one from the um, members journal page that we did. So I'll put one of those on. And then it will match the journal itself because there's one on the front. Now there's one on the back. So it's it all matches. And then I can just so you could do that. You can do that. Or like that. The bump makes it look more vintage. <laughs> Next painting is the stems without flowers and a collage page with a big shot press course. <laughs> I don't have any morning glories. <laughs> but I will be doing oh I I am gonna play with some of those um papers and do some drawings on them. Maybe fairies or I don't know, something. There. Let's, uh... Yeah, good. <laughs> or, well, the one I did, he was, it was he or she, it was, it was unisex. <laughs> there was no real, it could be either one. So then I can just get my markers. And then just put my antennas. And then his little legs. Let's see. We have what, six? He has a little, his little tongue too, remember? They have a tongue. <laughs> there. Yeah, it's in this one. That's why I put that one on. Yeah, so that's my closure. And then my butterfly page. I haven't written in it yet, but. Yep, 
yeah, so each it, you could write in here whatever you want to write about for that month. Same within here. And there. Or here. Or here. So you got secret journaling places. <laughs> That's what I liked about it. Yeah, this would be really cool too if you did it and put it in a a shadow box, I think. Thanks, Teresa. Um, it's on the dot. It, it's level three, the blooming artist. And uh, I think you're on level two. But if, yeah, if you if you um, go to level three, it is there, and yet then you have all the other levels below you in the membership. Yeah, so that was fun. So that finishes, and that I just put one of these. That's one of the uh, dies, or not dies. Um, prints from the the real flowers. These are actual real prints from real flowers and weeds. So I love how detailed they are. And now I have to do finish my other one, which will be where is it? July. Um, I know I started it. Where did I put it? I don't see it here. I'll have to look for it. Um, another thing, remember when I did this one? This is the actual leaf, so it's still flat. So you could actually, now that it's dry, glue this to the paper. See how it leaves a neat print? But you could glue that right to the paper too if you wanted to um it's so pretty trying to be exciting to see how well the flower press papers holds up yeah these were well these ones these ones are over a month old and they haven't changed and there's nothing on them So it'll be interesting to see if they stay those pretty colors, the purple and the blue and green. Oh, that explains it. Secrets kept from the <laughs> secrets kept. <laughs> It depends what you want. Some people don't didn't want journaling, and that's what the level three is, is, is journaling. So it also involves painting, but anything to do with your journal, sketchbook type of thing. Whereas the second level is a mixed media painting. If they haven't changed after four weeks, they should hold well. The changed ones I got happened within the first week of drawing. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, let's, um, yeah, even the, like, this is just copy paper, but look at all the colors in it. That's copy paper, an eco dyed one. So you can actually see the flower. So, and these are also over a month old. So, I guess they'll stay. Mm. 
No, and I didn't do anything to the paper. Didn't put any, what is it, allium and all that stuff, rust, vinegar. I didn't do anything to them. You could try sealing them with matte medium and keep the air out. Yeah, yeah, I can try and see, open them. It'd be interesting to open it again after six months and see what the differences would be with the allium and the um, matte medium. I'm not sure, did they put a, um, some kind of a treatment on the eco dye ones that you boil? Do they put a, something on them afterwards to keep the colors that they get when they boil them? Can you show the inside butterfly again? Yep. It gets a little squished when you're you close it, but <laughs> they're fun. I love pop up stuff. There's a few things I want to try. So that's it for today, guys. So if you got any ideas, you want me to do something, put it in the comments after this has loaded. wonder if some even use gelatin, like when... We are sizing watercolor papers. Mm, maybe. I don't know. You're welcome, Teresa. Awesome. So you guys get creative and have some fun in your little art area. And um, till next time, stay creative. Have a great day.